What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today will be my full review of the Shark Rotator Professional Liftaway. At least that's what it's been dubbed. Now this particular machine, much like the Navigator that you probably see right off camera, is a shark machine that's been around for quite a hot minute now. And for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to have gone down that much in price. Although there is an upgraded version of this available that has the Duo Clean and the Anti Tangle technology. Not the power fins, but the one before it. So, is the classic rotator still a good pick? Well, if you're shopping for a shark, it might be, but I think there are better options out there in the price range. I think personally that the Navigator is the better choice, but. We'll still do the full review on this and come to conclusions after the various tests. So, this is my full review of the Shark Rotator Professional Liftaway. Now, the biggest thing about this machine as far as its advertising is when compared to the previous generation navigators, it actually has center feed suction. The suction actually goes through the center of the nozzle, which is better for performance. It also has LED headlights, which are nice and bright and work very well. There's not much to complain about there. And it has the same rubber coated wheels, so it's pretty decent on bare floors. It is a pretty good upgrade from the previous Navigators because it has a felt seal at the back and it does have rubber coated wheels just like the Navigator. So it is better for bare floor pickup in that regard. And for carpets, it appears to be about the same. Pretty good, not great, but pretty good. So it's not gonna be for every carpet. It's not gonna be at the best, but I understand the appeal as to why a lot of cleaning people actually use this. In fact, this particular machine, both these machines in fact, belong to a woman who used this blue one in particular for her cleaning business and she used the white, the gray one for her personal usage. So this blue one has been through the ringer and it's still working. Unfortunately, the, the gray one, despite it having far less usage, the power head just died on it so I just had to pay Shark a good amount of money to get a new power head, something that should be covered under warranty. So keep that in mind, the power heads on these do fail prematurely and Shark goes out of their way to not cover them under warranty. Even though they tell you they'll be covered when you buy the machine it, by using terms like VIP service warranty and all that. Although these those terms have been retroactively removed from these machines, so you may have seen the advertisements of these when they first came out and saw the VIP service warranty guarantee, but when you actually buy these now, that warranty is only a limited warranty. It is five years, which is pretty good, but it only covers the main suction motor, which is, don't get me wrong, it's good that that's covered, but that's the bare minimum. It does not cover the power head, and these brush rollers are not designed to be removed. So if you have any issues with the power head, you're out of luck, Chuck, and you're just going to have to buy a new power head and just hope that the representative on the phone at Shark gives you a deal on shipping, which is the best you're going to do for the most part. So the best they'll usually do is give you half off and shipping, and my house smells like weed for some reason. Anyways, this particular Shark... Uh, thankfully does not have that issue with the power head, but the other one next to it did. So keep in mind, this is not the most reliable machine and it's not one that I would pick if you're concerned about long-term longevity. There's a reason why you can get this many features for the low price point. There is a reason for that and that is the reason. These machines aren't built that well, but Maybe if the performance is really good, then maybe it can offset that. So, without further ado, we'll go into the pickup test. Alright, here we are with the classic Intellitech Studios pickup test. We've got potato flakes on both bare floors, carpet, and the transition between the two. This machine does not have any sort of manual height adjustment. The base just glides along the floor. So all we have to do is shut off the brush roller for bare floors and have it on for carpets. I'll show you how to activate that later on. But it's fairly simple.
let's see the results. Okay. Oh, there's a couple flakes left over here, but it's possible that I missed that section. On this section, though, pretty good. This carpet's very matted down. I do need to shampoo this section. But, of course, we've got some flakes in between the two. That's fairly typical. And on the bare floor... Okay, we do have some fine flakes left over. So, not perfect. Not as good as the duo cleans on bare floors. But on carpets, it's actually better than the duo cleans. So... That's the traditional trade-off you get whenever you're shopping for a shark. The duo cleans are always better on bare floors, and the non-duo cleans are always better on carpets. Like 99% of the time, in fact, I would say 100% of the time, that's true. So, this particular machine does great on carpets, and okay on bare floors. Speaking of which, we've got several buttons right here on the top. This is our main power button. This button turns on and off the brush roller, and keep in mind that when the machine is in the upright position, or when the power head is locked upwards and not down, the brush will always be off. So you don't have to worry about it damaging your floors when you're using the attachments. But yeah, so this turns on and off the brush roller. And this particular button releases the wand. And this button activates the lift away portion. So we can see the wand release button, as it says, releases the wand. And this button right here activates the lift away portion. So now we can take this canister and carry it with us to do stairs and all sorts of things. This canister is rather bulky. It's much more bulky than the Navigators, but it's not nearly as bulky as the Apexes or the Stratos. So there is a little bit of a middle ground there in terms of how maneuverable this canister portion is in lift away mode. When you want to pull off the hose for tools, you can press this blue button right here, on some models it's red, and unfortunately it doesn't really, like, it doesn't actually click and stay like the higher end sharks do, so you have to push the button and actually pull out the handle, which is really tricky when you only have one hand to do it with. And unfortunately this attachment fitting is different than a lot of other sharks. It looks the same, but if you try to take other shark attachments and push it on, they don't really work. I mean they kind of go on, but not all the way. This isn't usable. So, unfortunately, you have to use the special rotator attachments. This particular machine did come with a nice long crevice tool, but I seem to have misplaced it. I'll have to find that before I return it to the customer. And the dusting brush that it comes with is fairly typical for sharks. So, it's a little bit too short, but it does work. And we actually do have a suction control slider right here, which is one thing I really like about sharks. And I will always like that about sharks. I wish other companies like Dyson would actually copy this because having a suction control on the hose itself and not just on the power head is a great feature because you don't always need a ton of suction when you're using the tools. In fact, usually you don't need very much at all. So that's definitely a nice feature. And of course this works also if you are using it on carpets and you find that it's sticking to the floor a little bit too much and it's a bit hard to push, you can try turning this and letting off a little bit of suction in order to uh, allow a little bit more air to escape and make it easier to push. And when you're done, that just clips right up top. Now when you want to recline the machine for vacuuming, where your foot is, or I should say you put your foot where it says foot, and you just pull it back. There's no levers or anything. The actual mechanism where this clips upright does sometimes wear out, especially after several years. And this is not nearly as maneuverable, or dare I say navigatorable, as the Navigators. The rotator name is very fitting for this model because, well, it rotates. But it's not very pleasant to rotate. It's, this machine is very top heavy. In a similar vein to the Stratos, but again, it's not as bad as the Apex or Stratos. So, if you're choosing this over a powered liftaway machine, yes, the liftaway is not powered, but the otherwise usage of the machine is way nicer because there's a lot less weight that you're having to deal with. As far as the cord, we do have a cord clip right up here, so once you wound up the cord, you can quickly release it, and there's a clip right back here. Now, of course, you do have to remove the cord from the clip if you want to use the wand, but not the hose. So that's a nice feature. Now, as far as filters go on this machine, we have a dust cup release right up here, which is just a little trigger that we just sort of pinch, and that pulls off. 
and that's right there. You got a little button right here that you press to release the dirt. And you can also open this top piece in order to make sure this little screen is clear. You want to make sure this, clear, this screen is clear of any debris so you don't lose suction. Now there's not any effective cyclone on this, so the filters unfortunately get dirty very quickly. And that also reduces the lifespan of the motor. So that's not good. The longevity on these isn't nearly as good as something like a Miele or a Dyson, but eh, it is what it is. So we do have two filters right here. Yes, these are very gross. I will return, I will put new filters in these before I return this to the customer. I only put the old filters back in after washing them for this pickup test so no debris would get on them. And it looks like no debris got on them anyways. Now these filters are supposed to be white, so that is that. Now I will go ahead and show you real quick how to change all the filters since I'm going to do that anyways. All right, so we're gonna take this filter, throw it away. We're gonna take this filter off of this, throw it away. And we're gonna press this little gray button right here, pop out this filter, which is really gross. That's really bad. We're gonna throw that away. And I'm going to wipe out the filter enclosure and all that. Now we're gonna take our new set of filters. I will link these in the description just in case you need them. So we've got a set of the pre-motor filters and a post-motor. That just pops in right there. And that just goes on. A little bit wet there from the disinfecting wipe. That's not good. I'll wipe that off real quick. And pop that on. And click it. I said click it. There we go. Into place. Now we'll open up these. Try not to tear up these filters. You can see that's what the new one's supposed to look like. And that's what that's supposed to look like. So this little pad goes right down in here. I'm going to make sure that's flush in there. And then this goes right on there. Just push it on, just like that. And that pops down, just like that. And then your bin goes back on. I will link the exact filters that I bought in the description in case you would like to buy them for yourself. Now I recommend changing the filters on this machine, all three that you see every year. And the pre-motor filters, the, one, the ones in this little white cavity, you want to wash those at least every month. Check them every time you empty the bin, which is easy because you can see them. And definitely wash them as needed. They get dirty pretty quickly because this machine does not have a very effective cyclone. So keep that in mind. There will be a lot of filter maintenance if you do pick up a shark. But if you wash those filters every month, maybe a little bit later, or maybe a little bit sooner, depending on your usage, and if you replace those two filters in addition to this filter every year, then your shark should hopefully stay in tip-top shape. The reason you need to replace these filters, even though they're washable, is because they deteriorate, especially that little pad filter that I showed you, because that will often start to flake, and little strands of it will get sucked into the motor and put the motor off balance and reduce the life of your motor. That's why you need to change those filters, because they can restrict airflow, and in some cases even cause damage to the motor if they wear out and are not replaced. And they're cheap anyway, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, spending 20 bucks a year on your vacuum isn't the end of the world uh, when it's an investment to clean your house. So definitely change those. I'll link those in the description. So that's it. That's my full review on the Shark Rotator Professional Liftaway. Now my recommendation is these machines are usually around two or three hundred dollars. I personally don't recommend that because if you're going to buy a Shark of this design, I would, especially for how much this machine is, I would rather get the Navigator Liftaway 0M, the ZU560, which I have reviewed previously. Although, to be honest, I'm not recommending any sharks at the moment because the one shark that I really liked, which was that ZU560, I had to send it back to shark because it actually shocked me and it killed the machine by shooting a spark out of the power button, which is a pretty bad safety hazard. And that is not an uncommon problem that I've seen with sharks. So because of the safety risk and the potential danger of these machines, I do not recommend them at all. But 
if you are going to buy a shark in this price range, I would personally rather pick the Navigator Liftaway Zero M ZU560 model, which I'll link that in the description in case you're interested. Or this Navigator that you've also seen off screen, I do recommend that as well, again, if you must buy a shark. Uh, that's the same as the blue one that I just talked about, only without the Zero M like this. So, or I should say, just like this, it doesn't have Zero M. So you will have to clean off the brush roll, but thankfully the brush roll on this is easy to clean as long as you do it every once in a while and don't wait for it to build up to the point where it gets to be a problem then it's not a problem there are little grooves to allow you to clean off the brush so it's not the end of the world but get the anti-tangle one if you're going to spend this much money especially because that machine has better attachments it's lighter weight it's easier to maneuver it has the anti-tangle technology it cleans better on bare floors and just as good on carpets and yeah, it's better built in every single way. So that machine I'm going to link in the description in addition to this one, as well as a better $200 vacuum. Like a couple different $200, two $300 vacuums that I feel are better than this. So the link will be full, or the description will be full of other links of alternative vacuums, including this one if you really do love this one. So, this is Intellitech Studio signing out. I hope you enjoyed this review and found it helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, considering like, consider liking and subscribing. Uh, and otherwise, that is that. This is Intellitech Studios. Have a good one. Peace.